Hello and welcome to Spa Business Mastery Podcast. I am Kirsten Foss and I'm really, really glad that you're here. So today's topic has to do with spa sales and even more um, pointed than just spa sales, it's how to have rock solid sales. And big picture, um, the big picture point of this is that when you have rock solid focus, that is exactly how you get rock solid sales. Now, <clears throat> we've we've heard before the saying of, of saying how it goes, uh, whatever you put focus to grows. And I've always been a pretty focused person. That's been a character trait of mine since I was very, very little. <laughs> I am the oldest child and of three siblings or two, two other siblings. And I always took that role on very seriously. And so I, I just happened to always be like when I had an idea, it was just like there was some intense focus behind that. And I know that my mom, it probably drove my mom crazy a lot of the time, my parents crazy, but it really has served me um, as an adult. Um, I have been um, told by other spa owners before I actually got into coaching and consulting. Um, when I was at events with them, they've made comments like, wow, you're really focused, aren't you? And I, it was kind of right around then that I realized, okay, I think I think my level of focus is just a, little, a bit different than most, um, most entrepreneurs. So I want to share some of the focus strategies that I've used in my personal life, and, but how I've applied them to my business so that you can also use these kinds of tactics for yourself. Because Lord knows as a spot owner, you got a lot of balls in the air and you're juggling all of them. And focus tends not to be the word that you use for yourself. Am I right? So, okay. Now, even though you know what you put focus to grows, um, it just often seems like it's, that's a lot of work for spa owners. <laughs> but the, the, really the crux of the matter is if you need more sales, um, then you absolutely need to get focused on sales. All right. Now, what normally happens in the spa industry when it comes to sales? Well, most of the time we hear stories, we've experienced this um, as employees, if you've ever been in a spa employees, but you know really how it goes is, you know, the spa owner kind of seems to kind of get a little bee in her bonnet about needing to increase sales. And as a spa owner, we know what that feels like. It is like, oh my gosh, something's got to give right here and we need cash stat or you know, we're not going to be able to keep going like this. Um, the spa owner may even not be taking a paycheck. So we all know from being in the position of a spa owner that when the spa boss gets a little cranky about the team not selling, uh, we know what the pressure is like uh, behind that, that um, request to your team. But what normally happens is that the, the spa owner is like, okay, team, we need to sell. You guys need to sell more. You know, we've done product knowledge training. You know, I've given you all the tools. I make sure that we've got all the products stocked, but you're still not selling. And so what happens is the team starts getting their back up a little bit because estheticians hate selling. You know, if you are watching me on Facebook or YouTube, can I get a like thumbs up? Because all of us hate selling. But here's the thing. All of us love as consumers to be sold to. And there's a there's a difference between um, being being sold to and wanting to buy something. OK, now, when we're being sold to, it usually feels like there's pressure behind it. We're feeling like, oh, I don't know if this is actually this offer is for me. Is it relevant? Do, can I afford it? Um, and so we just want to make sure that, you know, when we are selling to our clients or to consumers, if we're doing virtual, um, that we are coming from a place of non-salesy. Okay. So that's the first point is that as a spa owner, usually you get some sort of friction coming back from your team about selling. They may not actually be vocal about it. You just will notice that even though you're asking them to sell more and to focus on their retail sales and to focus on their, their rebooking, it's just not happening. So there's this kind of this kind of silly cycle that keeps happening in our industry about sales. 
the, the, the spa owner absolutely needs it to keep going. The estheticians feel like eh, it's icky. I don't like selling. I just want to give services. All right. So I want to just kind of keep that thought there. Um, and I want to just move on to my next thought. And I'm going to circle back to this whole icky selling thing. So what's actually happening, big picture, uh, about selling, about what's broken in the spa industry is that there's typically not um, great sales training being given. Now, uh, lots of vendors will do sales training and product knowledge training for spas, yes, but that's normally only once a year, maybe twice a year. Um, what else, you know, I'm just going to pose this question, what else are you doing if you have a team what else are you doing to, um, to augment your sales training on a regular basis? Okay. So first problem is there's inconsistent sales training. Um, usually it's kind of once a year product knowledge, and then the owner is expecting the team to sell no problem. Uh, one of the things I remember as a spa owner and as an esthetician is that whenever I went to product knowledge trainings, my sales went up exponentially. The spa sales went up exponentially. And it stayed that way usually for two or three months, and then it started declining again. Again, this is just another nod to the fact that whatever we put attention to grows. So that just means like, ooh, eat. we need to, as a leadership team, make sure that we have some consistent sales training so that everybody's eye is, you know, on the prize. The other thing that's often missing in uh, spas in terms of sales in their business and trying to, you know, make them bigger, better, is that they're not tracking their sales um, as well as they should be. So you may be tracking, you know, your total service sales and your total retail sales, but do you know enough about spa metrics, the other spa metrics like retail to service ratio? Do you know what the benchmark is supposed to be? Do you, do you, does your team know what they're expected to sell? Because when we have these general goals of, okay, team, sell more, we get general uh, vague outcomes. So in terms of retail to sales ratio, uh, a benchmark for the spa industry, if you are a full service facility, uh, is 30%. So they, you know, you should be selling 30% retail um, if, if, if you, if the total of the total bill, right? So tracking service to retail sales ratio is one way to keep your eye on the prize. So if you are a full service spa and you just are discovering this metric and you go into your spa software and you see that your, your service to retail ratio is like 9%, okay, that's where you know, you, you know there's an issue here. We've got a selling issue. You knew it, but now you have um, very, very clear metrics. And you also will know um, if you've got a team by looking at everybody's individual retail sales ratio where the leak in the bucket is, right? So the thing that's missing from a lot of spas when they're trying to increase their sales is they're actually just not tracking their sales metrics. And again, what we put focus to grow. So if you're tracking your metrics once a week um, and sharing those outcomes with your team and you're sharing one, maybe you're sharing once a month with um, you're doing team goal setting with their own individual metrics. That's how you keep um, selling top of mind. Okay. And the last part of a sales system is your marketing system. Okay. So we need the marketing system to fill the hopper um, so that your sales training is impeccable and that uh, your team is selling really well and that you have a sales tracking system. So you can keep track of kind of the, the success of, of what's happening and course correct on things that are not as successful. Okay. So those are the three systems that I have, and I do have a blog post <clears throat> um, a historical blog post about these particular systems that, that dive into a little bit more. Today, I really want to give you three tactics uh, to focus on with your sales training, because, you know, we started off, you know, with our big picture leadership thinking, okay, you know, what systems am I missing for sales? Now we're going to um, narrow in our focus a little bit. We're going to focus on the sales training system. And in particular, I've got these three little nuggets for you. Again, remember, consumers hate being sold to, but they love to buy. Think of yourself as a consumer when it comes to buying new skincare. Um, 
if some, if there was a rep trying to do a hard sell on you, it, you get your hackles up. You don't like being sold to. You want a chance to be able to uh, make your own decisions about this whether a product or service. You want to have time to to assess if this is actually the right product or service for you um, and for your pain points, and then you can make a decision. So these three tips are going to help that whole process. So especially for clients to be able to self-identify and say yes. All right, tip number one for sales training and tactics is to be 100% clear about the differences between features, benefits, an ideal client for these products or services. Gosh, you know, it kind of makes me a bit crazy <laughs> um, with skincare lines when they're when they say that, you know, a product is suitable for all skin types. Yes, it's suitable for can be suitable for all skin types. But the issue is that there's usually a specific um, ideal client for this particular product, meaning that, OK, let's take, for example, glycolic. Um, I'm just working with a client right uh, right now. We're, uh, we're doing some event planning with her and she's going to be launching a new product that has glycolic in it. Um, and when we were getting, when we're preparing for her event and we're, we're writing this email to send out an invite uh, and preparing to write the copy for her sales page, we really needed to dial into um, the pain points of clients who would want this product and not even know they wanted it. So we dug in and came up with just, you know, even if you just come up with three pain points, it really helps you to figure out who it's best suited for. Okay. So with glycolic, our pain points were, you know, rough texture of skin after winter, um, dull, lifeless, um, kind of dull skin, you know, not looking very bright, um, and then pigmentation and acne scarring was another uh, point pain point of clients. And so once we figure out what the pain points, then we're much easier able to communicate the features of a product. That's the what is in it or what the service includes. Uh, so if it's a, a service, you know, the what are usually the key pieces. So, you know, if it's a glycolic peel and a hydrating serum with hyaluronic acid and a hydrating occlusion mask um, at the end. So that when people are reading your copy, they can self-identify A, they, they can see those pain points. Yes, I have those pain points. And then they can self-identify with those features um, as far as exfoliating and hydrating and um, moisturizing. And then we also want to talk about the benefits. Um, and that's kind of where the, the hydrating and moisturizing comes in. So features, the what, the who, the, the what's, um, the benefits, the hows, and then the ideal clients. So as long, you know, you can you guys can do even do flashcards for each other. Um, it's, it's really about keeping it top of mind, right? This is what the whole topic about is today is focus, 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 focus. So even though you do have your team going to product knowledge once a year, maybe twice a year, <laughs> um, I would encourage you to include more training and maybe it's a, a monthly staff meeting that you rotate different products, um, you know, flashcards through, you practice with each other, create little sales scripts, um, you can also create little scripts for overcoming objections. So with my private coaching clients, I have a feel good sales system that I teach them. And yes, I've got scripts for them at each stage of the service. So you need a script for when you are doing, uh, going through their intake, you want a little script to go, um, go through when you're doing the skin analysis. You know, all of those little scripts that are educational scripts help feed the sale at the end of the service. But having overcoming objection scripts is really helpful because I think for most estheticians, when you're selling, you're always worried about somebody saying, oh, I can't afford it. That's, you know, and we've got a lot of estheticians and spa owners who have um, their own hangups about money and uh, money and worthiness and poverty. So, so many times I've seen estheticians get super triggered when a client says, I can't afford it. But we also know that people use the, the terms, <laughs> I can't afford it, 
if they need an easy way to say no. Okay, so we want to have little scripts about overcoming objections. So for example, if somebody had said to me, um, oh yeah, these look really great. Um, I just can't afford it right now. My script was always, hey, that's no problem. Um, just know that I've got your skincare prescription on file. Here's a copy for you. And if you, um, if you decide that you wanted to try one of these, one or two of these products, I can give you a sample, blah, blah, blah. And another one was, um, uh, so if somebody said, uh, oh, I've got, I've got, I'm going to use up what I've got at home. Well, the other part of the conversation at the very beginning, of course, of a facial, when you've asked them what their, what their skincare concerns are, and they've told you what the problem is, when you get to the end of the facial, you circle back to that. And when they say, oh, I'm just going to use what I've got left in my, in my cupboards, that's when you can say, oh, that's no problem. Um, I, I just know that when we were discussing your skin at the very beginning of your treatment, you were really concerned about the pigmentation that's happening and what you're using isn't, um, isn't doing anything for you. But if you change your mind, I totally understand uh, all your information is on file and you can just give me a call or pop in and, and we'll get you set up with what you need. So you're acknowledging, yes, that is the concern of them, but you're also um, turning things around uh, in terms of um, just the reality of, of, um, of you know, selling uh, and people buying. All right, number two. So the first one is be 100% clear on features, benefits, and ideal clients. If you can really nail those and never ever say, oh, it's good for all skin types. Uh, if you can really nail those and your team can nail those pieces, I guarantee that you will, they will have a much easier time selling because their communication is just much more clear. Uh, number two is to shift your client conversations using the 80-20 principle. So the 80-20 principle is applies to all sorts of stuff. So thing with your inventory, 20% of your products are accounting for 80% of your retail sales. Uh, likely 20% of your services are accounting for 80% of your total sales. How this works with conversations is that normally um, as an esthetician and somebody who's been in the treatment room for a really long time and have team members, had team members, um, we do know that we tend to talk about personal stuff too much. <clears throat> so if you need to increase your retail sales, you need to get your team on track, or maybe it's just you as a solo, you need to clean up your conversations and shift over to speaking about spa, skin, um, beauty, pop culture, anything that has to do with wellness, kind of whatever your business is about, 80% of the time that should be the conversation. 20% of it should be personal. So what happens is when we're using 80% of our time to talk about spa, skin, all that kind of stuff, in a natural way, you're not like you're trying to force it. Um, what happens is that the conversation is already on track so that when you get to the point at the end, when they've gotten dressed and they're, you know, they're, you're sharing their skincare prescription and their future treatments, they're already really primed. And this is just the extension of the service. Okay. So you don't have to feel that this awkwardness going from personal conversations and then feeling like, Oh gosh, I forgot to talk about, skin stuff. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're doing a hard left in your conversation and it feels awkward. We don't want that. So keeping to that 80, 20 pr principle, as far as conversations happening in the treatment room will absolutely help keep, uh, increase your uh, retail sales and your service rebookings. I guarantee this, this has worked for myself. This has worked for my coaching clients. I've done it, been there and it works. Number three tip for increasing um, your retail sales or really just nailing that sale uh, has to do with metrics. Just pick a metric, just pick one for the month if you're unfamiliar with, with and you're new to spa uh, metrics, pick one metric and focus on it for a period of time. So for example, the metric of pre-booking. If you need to have more uh, services being booked, then focus on you and your team need to freak, focus on your pre booked booking metrics. So um, the goal is to hit 60%. So 60% of the clients today should be pre booked. If they're not being pre booked, something's something's up. That's a flag in the play for you. That's a different conversation. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, another metric to focus on is your retail ratios, your retail to service ratios. 
Um, so that means that as, like I said earlier, if you are full service spa, 30% should be the benchmark of what your team should be bringing in. If your skin therapy business, it's easily 50% um, retail sales you should be doing. Okay. Um, number, uh, sorry, the, the, another metric is like average ticket to focus on. And that's more of a race against yourself. There's not really an industry benchmark for that because it really depends on, you know, if you're niched, kind of what services you offer. And you can split up average ticket into average service ticket and average retail ticket. And then the other metric, the last metric is number of products sold. So pick any one of these and focus on it even just for a week, pre-booking or retail sales ratios or average ticket or number of products sold and make it a little bit of a game for yourself. Look at what your existing metric is and pick a goal metric for it. So if you want to improve any aspect of your spa business, the magic ingredient is focus. <laughs> but I understand that as spa owners, focus can be really difficult to try to, it's like this elusive thing in front of you that you're always trying to grasp. What I urge you to do if this call is, or if this uh, conversation is really um, relevant to you right now, is I want you to reevaluate what is on your to-do list in terms of new growth initiatives. Because quite frankly, you have some existing work here to polish up and, you know, you, there's, play, there's it's an opportunity for you to leverage your sales this way, just by picking a metric and focusing on product knowledge and shifting your client conversations. It's an easy way to increase your sales without having to start a new growth initiative that you think will bring in new business. All right. So I'm saying go the path of least resistance um, and tweak what you're already doing right now. Optimize what you've got going. So if you are struggling with your sales, if you are struggling with focus, I get it. We all need some support every once in a while. Um, if you feel like you want to book a coaching call with me, like you don't want to do a six month program or anything like that, but you just need somebody to help you refocus, regroup, um, some fresh eyes on some growth initiatives that you were thinking about and, you know, just getting a perspective on, Hey, which one should I, what should I be focusing on for the next six months? give me a DM, shoot me an email, Kirsten, Kirsten Foss at KirstenFoss.com. Um, and we can book a, a single coaching call for you to just get regrouped and refocused for your spa sales. Okay. That's it for me uh, today. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. If you like what you hear, I would love it if you left a review from wherever you are listening from, and I will be back here next week.